speaking shocked me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are we joyful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Praise God. Father, we thank you for it's another moment to learn from you. We thank you for every moment in Cross Point Church is a moment of radical learning and radical unlearning. We thank you for this is a time of transformation. We thank you for our mind will never remain the same. We thank you for the scripture says at the entrance of your word, light is given. We thank you for our lives are transformed. Our lives are changed by the word. In the name of Jesus. Hebrews speaking, it said that the word of God is living and powerful. It was likened to the double-edged sword. The Bible says it goes as far as cutting asunder bones and marrow. You know, discerning the thought of men. We pray in the name of Jesus that the word of God bring an immediate solution to every problem. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we slap our hands together once again for the ministry of um, cross-worship? I think we can do that better. <laughs> Honestly, we have, we have um, the best choir in the world. <laughs> believe, believe it or not, hallelujah, we have the set of best voices and best talent. Can we do that again for Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. First of all, I want to appreciate God for this opportunity. This feels different. I want to appreciate God for this opportunity to hold this mic and to bring the word of God to us. Hallelujah. And I want to specially honor and thank and appreciate Pastor Ladi for um, this noble and spiritual opportunity. I'm, I'm taking it as a spiritual task. Hallelujah. Because ministry is supernatural. It's not just intellectual. And I'm grateful to him for his trust and his deep belief, you know, in God's investment upon our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm thankful, sir, in absentia, though. I'm thankful for the opportunity given to me to bring the word of God to the people. Hallelujah. Cross Point Church has been a place of radical learning. How many of us are witnesses to this? Praise God. A lot of us came, came with bundles of baggages and laws and religion, warped mindset. Praise God. But everything is straightening out by the word of God. Hallelujah. I believe that the next big thing after salvation is the quality of doctrine that a believer is exposed to. And that is why that we will need to always be forever grateful to Pastor Ladi for the deep work of labor in doctrine that is do doing upon our lives. Hallelujah. Because Temitokwe said something very fantastic on Wednesday during the Bible study. She said that your rest is either taken away or given to you by the quality of information that you submit to. So it matters. The quality of doctrine matters because it will determine your growth orientation. It will determine where you are inclined towards. Hallelujah. And this is why Cross Point is a very, very very, very resourceful community that support growth and edification. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate ourselves? We are, we are planted in one of the best communities. We have healthy diet here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I always say something that it is not enough to be born. It is important to pay attention to what you are being fed with. Hallelujah. And that's why in Cross Point Church, we pay very close attention to the content of what we preach. We preach the word of God undiluted, unmasked Jesus, unmasked Jesus, undiluted. Hallelujah. Christ said that when I come amidst you, I have determined to know nothing else except for Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. Are we ready for some word this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So last Sunday, uh, pastor started, we started a topic on repose. Repose. And we are firmly established that the word repose means to rest. To rest in the love of God, to rest in the finished work of Christ. The word rest is not to mean that God was tired when he rested. The Bible said in Genesis that, and God rested you know, on the seventh day. It doesn't mean that God was tired. God is almighty. 
he doesn't add up to say that the almighty God was tired and he rested. No, God was done. He was not tired. He was done. He was satisfied with what he has created. And that was why <coughs> the Bible, sorry, that was why, excuse me, that was why the Bible says that he rested. It's just like an artist that was trying to draw a picture. So when he was done putting all the strokes, he dropped the brush because he was, if he had it, if he had anything again, it might probably spoil the whole thing. He dropped the brush because he was satisfied that, yes, what I've created is correct, is perfect. And that was why the Bible says in Genesis that everything God created was good and perfect. Hallelujah. And if you notice, Adam was the crown of God's creation. Adam was the last entity God created. So Adam was created into rest. And that alone typifies the second creation that was to come in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We do a lot of Bible reading this morning. So media, please. We need to move together. Hallelujah. And we have... Are we, are we getting blessed already? And uh, we have firmly established that the Old Testament consists of shadows that are pointing to Christ. Old Testament consists of symbols, shadows. If care is not taken... If you remove Christ, the ultimate context from the Old Testament books, you'll be left with chaffs. Hallelujah. You'll be left with four-footed beasts that you don't know anything about. You'll be left with trumpets. You don't know anything about it. You'll be left with the being that is surrounded with eyes, but you really can't make any sense out of it. Hallelujah. But Christ is the substance of scriptures. Can you raise up your Bible or your iPad, anything that you have in your hand? Christ is the substance of the scriptures. Can we say it louder? The Bible has an agenda. And the agenda is a person. Ah, I love that Bible. <laughs> the Bible has an agenda. And the agenda is a person. The agenda of the Bible is Christ. Praise God. Christ is the substance of the scriptures. Every book in the Bible is screaming Christ. If properly studied if accurately dissected, every book of the Bible is shouting Christ. They are shouting it on the top of their voice. But sometimes religion has blindfolded us that the shout has been reduced to a whisper. Praise God. And that's why it is good to be planted in community like this where you see how, what the Bible is trying to communicate. The Bible is not necessarily trying to tell you about Abraham. He's not necessarily trying to tell you about Elijah. Elijah was wrong. Jesus corrected him in the gospel. Yes, Hallelujah. But the Bible has a spirit, and the spirit is Christ. The Bible has an obsession. It has a purpose. It has, it has, it has an objective, and the objective is to reveal Christ. Hallelujah. So we popularly say, people popularly say that the theology of scriptures is Christology. Hallelujah. That's what I just tried to explain now. Praise God. Let's read the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 to 17. I'm trying to build a background for the topic, so please stay with me. Colossians chapter 2 verses 16 to 17. We'll do three versions in a row. We'll do KJV, NIV, and message. Hallelujah. Colossians 2 16 to 17. The Bible says that let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Next verse, please. Which are a shadow. Praise God. So the bundles of everything they were doing in the Old Testament, they were all shadows. They were shadow of things to come, but the body, the body is Christ. Hallelujah. The body is Christ. What they saw was Christ, but they came back with limited understanding, giving us shadows and crumbles. Hallelujah. NIV, please. The same, the same scriptural passage. NIV. Oof. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Next verse, please. These are a shadow of things that were to come. The reality. However, however, is found in Christ. Reality is not in Elijah. No. 
Elijah was a shadow of things to come. Reality is not found in Moses. Moses was a shadow of things to come. And it's just so unfortunate that some of us, when we were on campus, were shouting mantles of Elijah. Honestly, I have gone to all night on mountains before, asking for mantles of... During the prayer, I was saying that during that time, I was reading the book, you know, God's Generals by Robert Lyadon, The Revivalist. So, I wanted to do desperate things. You know, I wanted to have marks. You know, the Bible says that we bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ on our body. So, let me have some marks. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But when I saw this scripture, the reality, however, is found in Christ. And Christ lives in you. Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Amen. So, let's do message. Ah, message is a bomb blast. Glory to God. Kadabaya. All those things. Okay, so don't put up with anyone pressuring you into the details of diet. Worship services or holidays, 17. All those things are mere shadows. Cast before what was to come. The substance is Christ. And that was what I was saying that Christ is the substance of scriptures. Woo! Ruth only makes sense because the substance inside Ruth is Christ. Yes. Nehum only makes sense because the substance inside Nehum is Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This morning I'm going to do a panorama of scriptures. We are going to fly through Genesis to Revelation. We are going to see who Christ is. How that the true message of the scripture is Christ. If the Bible is a garment, Christ is the fabric. If the Bible is a cloth, Christ is the material. Yes. Hallelujah. Christ is the fabric. Yes. And if you remove the fabric, there is no more cloth. Yes. There is no more garment. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Luke 24, 44. Glory to Jesus. Ambato Aziz Afahai. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 24, 44. Okay, I'm still used to opening my Bible. I've forgotten that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said, let me see, what version are we using? KJV, okay. And he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, one, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. This is the complete Old Testament. So, they were just shadows. They were prefiguring the reality in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the Sabbath we are talking about in the Old Testament is a prefigure of what we were, we were to experience in Christ. So, Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is a person. The person that communicated it as a day didn't see properly in the Old Testament. But we see now in Christ. Yes. Glory to God. We see now in Christ that Sabbath was a shadow. Sabbath as a day was a shadow of the rest we now enjoy in Christ. Hallelujah. Let's read John 5, 39 to 40 before I do. I want to do an analogy to explain all of these things. I'm still building the background. Don't forget our topic is still repose. Rest. Hallelujah. So I want us to stay basic this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. John 5, 39 to 40. Let's do message version. Yes. Message is a bullet. Praise God. Amen. Message chapter uh, um, John 5, 39. You have, you have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you will find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. So what, what Elijah did was that he entered the forest. He brought a tree back. Praise God. But a tree does not represent the forest. And a tree does not really portray the true character of the forest. Hallelujah. Whew. Message is so, is so sweet. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. These scriptures 
are all about me. How many scriptures? These scriptures are all about me. So Jesus is the fabric of the Bible. Can you raise up your Bible again? Jesus is the fabric of the Bible. Jesus is the substance of the scriptures. The Bible is no longer a mystery. Hallelujah. Genesis to Revelation is no longer a mystery. Let's do a practical um, analogy now. Can I have two guys? And I don't know if I can get like a black scarf to cover their faces. Or maybe a cloth that if we can't find clothes, the two guys must promise me that they will close their eyes firmly and they won't see anything. <laughs> Wiley. Okay, Samandi. Okay, well, come, come, come. Wiley, you can sit down. What can we get to close their eyes? Like, I. No, no, this, this cheat. This cheat. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want them to see anything I'm going to show the congregation. Even if they face the back, I want to engage them. They should use their hand. No, no. Thank you, thank you. Can we have another one, please? No, 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 please tie, tie for him. Tie for him, please. Like, I don't want you to see anything. And please, if you are seeing something, confess. <laughs> confess that you are. I want you to be in total darkness, like you are not seeing anything. Are you seeing anything? <laughs> Can we get another clue for him, please? Jacket. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wisdom. <laughs> Amen. Are you sure you are covered? How many fingers are these? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I think. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry for taking you through all this stress. It's just for the purpose of accurate understanding. Are you fine? Yeah. Are you sure you are fine? Yeah, Do you see me? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now. I want to use this tip to people as a type of what was happening in the Old Testament. And from there, we'll go to the message of rest. Hallelujah. I would like to have one more guy. No, 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 don't, don't come. No, don't come, don't come, please. Is that Shogo? Is that Shogo? Okay, sorry. Um, no. Okay, please come. Come. Yes. Can we put our hands together for him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we together? Please don't be carried away. I want you to climb the pulpit. Yes, climb the pulpit, please, and stay there. So, please don't mention anything, please. Please. So, I want you guys to, I want them to go up now. They are going to touch the person from his head to his waist and come back. Wait, I'm going to direct them, don't worry. And they will now come back and tell us and describe what they've touched. They will try and describe, in fact, to the extent of, <laughs> to the extent of even telling us probably the name or the color of their clothes, their height, maybe six feet. They will just, it's like I will change this person. Please come. <laughs> thank you, thank you, JJ, for that. Please, silence everywhere. There is silence in heaven. So, <laughs> so they are going to touch the person and they will come back to describe to us who the person is. Praise God. Can we, can we go ahead with that? All right, so we start with Johnson. You just have like 10 seconds to touch the person. Climb up. No, no, no. Yeah, climb up. Yes. So touch him. You're already around him. From his head to his waist. <laughs> Try to assess him. All right. All right, it's okay. It's okay. So calm down. What do you have to say about the person? I know he's a guy 
with beers. And he's wearing a wristwatch. It's, it's actually not funny. Eh? Okay, it's funny. But, but just listen first. But I can't tell if he's fair. But I know he's a guy with beers and wristwatch. And this is actually what happened when the prophet came back. They said they saw lion. They saw lamb. So at a point, we were not even sure of what they really saw. But the substance is Christ. Hallelujah. The substance is Christ. So, Samandi, can we have you upstage? Still wait there, please, um, uh, Johnson. All right. You just have 10 seconds to observe. Okay. Thank you. So, what do you have to say about the person? Okay. We bears. We are in a long sleeve shirt. Um, I guess it's a drama. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> okay, so what more can you say about him? Yeah, kind of muscular. Muscular. <laughs> okay, what more can you say about him? Mm, I guess it's a bit fair in complexion. It's... Uh, <laughs> Praise God. I, let me stop here before we enter into something else. Do you know that if you were there when the people that wrote the Old Testament, some of those people, and they are telling you what they saw, if you knew Jesus, you would just be looking at them. That you said God kill and make a life. You know now, how? Hallelujah. This was exactly what happened in the entire Old Testament. There is no mystery there. There is only a limited understanding of who Christ is. And let me tell you how it is communicated. In Genesis, Christ is the seed of the woman. In Exodus, is the Passover lamb. In, in Leviticus, is the high priest. In Numbers, is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, is the prophet that was like unto Moses. Hallelujah. In Joshua, is the captain of our salvation. In Judges is the judge and the lawgiver. In Ruth is our kinsman redeemer. Hallelujah. In first and second Samuel is the prophet of the Lord. In first and second Kings is the reigning king. In first and second Chronicles is the glorious temple. Praise God. In Ezra is the faithful scribe. In Nehemiah is the rebuilder of the walls. In Esther is the Mordecai. In, in Job is the day spring from on high. In Psalms is the Lord our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes is the wisdom of God. In, 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 um, in Song of Solomon is, the, is our lover, is our bridegroom. In, in Isaiah is the suffering servant, is the wonderful counselor, is the prince of peace. In Jeremiah and Lamentation is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel is the son of man. In Daniel is the son of man coming in the clouds. Hallelujah. In Uzziah is the bridegroom. In Joel is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. So when Joel was saying in the last days, I will pour out my spirit, he was talking about Christ. In Amos is the burden bearer. Amos 1.1 1, 1 says that the burden of the Lord came unto Amos. He was talking about Christ. In, in Obadiah is the mighty savior. The Bible says that savior shall arise upon Mount Zion. He's talking about Christ. In Jonah is the forgiving God. He forgave Nineveh. Hallelujah. In Micah is the, is, the, is the messenger with the blessed feet. Hallelujah. In Nahum, praise God. In Nahum, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. In Nahum is the avenger of God's elect. Praise God. In Habakkuk is the great messenger. In Zephaniah is the protector of the remnant, the, 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 the restorer of the remnant, I mean. In, in, in Agai is the cleansing fountain. In Zechariah is, 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 is um, praise God. In Zechariah, I've forgotten what Zechariah is really, but in Malachi is the son of righteousness. Yes, in Zechariah is the pierced son. Zechariah said he was pierced. He was pierced. So from Genesis to Revelation, he was there all along. But because they didn't have the full revelation of the gospel. The gospel is not recent. Yeah. 
the, go the gospel is eternal. It has existed. Before we came from the, the Bible says the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. So from Genesis to Malachi, these are, these are them. From, Ge from Genesis to Malachi, they were blindly communicating what they didn't know well. And Jesus came and said, no one has come to the Father except by me. Praise God. So they have limitation of, of revelation. Praise God. So what now happened? Let's please still stay, please. You can come to this side. Um, sorry. Just keep moving, keep moving. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we blessed already? Praise God. Amen. Yeah, so I want us to read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, TPT. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, TPT. We still have a long journey to go. Oh, God. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, TPT. Can you shift a little bit, Chris? Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, I've served the purpose, so there is no problem. Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophet in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment. So, Johnson came with a fragment. Samandi came with a fragment. But that's not the whole. They came with trees, but that's not the forest. Praise God. Hallelujah. The next verse, please. Verse 2. But to us, living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of his son. The appointed heir of everything. For through him, God created the panorama of all things and all time. Praise God. The next verse. Thank you. The next verse. Praise God. Hebrews, I mean Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. The next scripture, TPT. Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. Hallelujah. These were the true heroes commended for their faith. Yet, they lived in hope without receiving the fullness of what was promised them. Next verse. So, Sabbath was a promise of rest that was to come. And the rest is in Christ. Amen. But now, God has invited us to live in something better than what they had. So, why should I be asking for mantle of Elijah? The mantle of Elijah is too weak. No. It's too, he said, we have something better. And that thing that is better is Christ. This is so that they could be brought to finished perfection alongside of us. And the last scripture I want us to read. John 1, 14, message version. John 1, 14, message version. So what now happened? Now we have, we have been able to sweep through the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi. So the Bible now said the word. The word became flesh and blood. And moved into the neighborhood. So instead of going up to consult him and telling us about him, he came and dwelt amidst us. Amen. He said, we saw the glory with our own eyes. The one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Hallelujah. So Christ came down himself and showed us who God truly is. So we now know that the Sabbath that Moses was speaking about is not a day. That Sabbath is a person. And the person is Christ. Hallelujah. So in Matthew is the Messiah. In Mark is the miracle. In Luke is the Son of Man. In John is the Son of God. In Acts is the Ascended Lord. In Romans is the Justifier. In First and Second Corinthians is the Last Adam. In Galatians, is the one that set us free. In Ephesians, is the one that, 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 um, that um, our, is our riches. Hallelujah. In, in Philippians, is the God that meets our needs. Praise God. In Colossians, is the fullness of God's Godhead. Hallelujah. In First and Second Thessalonians, is the, is the soon coming king. In First and Second Timothy, is, is the mediator between God and man. 
In Titus is our blessed hope. In Philemon is the friend that is closer than a brother. In Hebrews is the blood that washed away all our sins. Praise God. In James is our great physician. In 1st and 2nd Peter is our chief shepherd. In 1st, 2nd and 3rd John is the everlasting love. Praise God. In Jude is the God our savior. In Revelation is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Praise God. So if you, if you flow through the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, he's talking about just one person. But we got the accurate understanding when Jesus came to the earth and was born. Hallelujah. I have some scriptures here, but I want to skip those scriptures so that we can go into some other concept. Can we? Okay. You can? Okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. Loose, loose, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Can we put our hands together for them as they have their seat? Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. For those that were stressed, I'm sorry. It was not um, intentional to stress you. Hallelujah. So the first Adam was created into God's rest. And this is a type of and shadow of what was to happen in the second creation. Hallelujah. Adam came when everything was finished. So we came into Christ when Christ has finished the works. Praise God. We are not here to do more works. We are here to rest. We are here to enjoy the finished works of Christ. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. Now we are entering our topic properly. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we glad to be in church this morning? Say glory. glory. He that has entered into his rest. He also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Hallelujah. In this scripture, what is God's rest? Christ. Christ is God's rest. We have been able to establish from the scripture that Jesus is the rest of God. Hallelujah. Christ is God's rest. So he that has entered Christ has ceased from his own works. He that has entered Christ has ceased from self-effort to please God and to provoke his blessing. He that has entered Christ is not struggling to pull God's favor or to provoke blessings of God. He that has entered Christ has ceased from works. I was describing my lifestyle when we were praying this morning. I was talking about how that I believe that how we believe nonsense. How that we believe that when you sin, the power of God in your life reduces. So, and there are some level of sin that you can't just stay in your room to ask for forgiveness. You'll have to go to a high mountain where there is cold, mosquitoes will bite you so that you will be able to tell God that I am sorry. I am going through all this pain to communicate my, how remorseful I am. And that was what we were doing that time. And the size, it's a loop. The loop continues. Because when you come down the mountain, that thing, you still go and do it. But when I came into grace, when I came into the message of grace, I rest from my works. Hallelujah. That's what the scripture is saying. You are not, you are not trying to provoke God to, to be pleased about you. God is already pleased about you because you are in Christ. Um, media, can we show that, um, that ark, that ark of Noah? So everything in the Bible, the ark of Noah was a very, very, ah, this thing is poor. It's not showing. <laughs> you can see it. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, now, the ark of Noah typify what was to come in Christ. So your reality is the reality of the ark. You're already in the ark. You can't sink. Hallelujah. 
you're already in the ark, you can't drown. So when people talk of lost your salvation, to, to say you lose your salvation in the ark is an insult on the ark. And that ark is Christ. Hallelujah. That ark typifies what who Christ is and how Christ has saved us. Was there anybody that was carried by ark that was lost? Everybody, even animals. Even animals that were carried by ark, they were safely dropped on the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, that picture typifies what the kind of rest we have in Christ. We are safely carried in Christ. The Bible says, no man can pluck them out of my hands. So while turbulence is going all around the ark, what was happening in the ark? Rest. They were resting. They were being carried. They were not struggling to float. They were floating. Because ark was carrying them. This is the foundation of our rest in Christ. Even though things are happening around us, they will find rest in the ark. Even those other things are sinking around us, but we found rest in the ark. We found comfort in the ark. We found safety. We are eternally justified. My salvation is not repentant. My salvation does not go back like a snail. Praise God. My salvation does not leak away in liters. My salvation is intact. My spirit is perfect. Everything in the ark is intact. Everyone in the house that was painted with blood at the lintel, they were saved. Whether Egyptians or anybody, they were, as long as the blood is on the lintel, they were covered. Hallelujah. Those were shadows pointing to the rest that we have in Christ. Can you say with me, I'm eternally justified. I am eternally saved. I'm eternally carried. Woo! I'm eternally resting in the love of God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So if the canal ark in the Old Testament could do much, how much more? The eternal ark of Christ. Praise God. If the canal ark, earthly ark, could carry even the tiniest of rats, how much more the eternal ark of Christ will carry the beloved and none of us will be lost. Hallelujah. This is the rest we have in Christ. We are radically loved. We are radically accepted. Beyond argument, we are already in the ark. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are locked up in Christ. Woo! Glory to Jesus. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking. I'll never be more glad. I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. Why would he fail? Why 
Amen. Christ is the seed of the woman. Christ is the ark that Noah was trying to communicate. Hallelujah. Moses was typifying Christ. All they saw, they, was try, they were trying to describe Christ. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. I am forever forgiven. Is it not amazing that nothing I do take me away? Even if I have mental disorder, it still loves me. Even when I have trauma, it still loves me. Nothing I do, nothing I do repent is love. Nothing I do takes away his love. I am radically loved. I am eternally justified. I am eternally redeemed. Woo. Can we pray in tongues for the next three minutes? Ikadabashata. Eradobo siga banda prete tena sonata. Shambrado siga banate. Alamando siya gabateyash. Can you take it higher, please? Rambro te sando bila kombra tanaso. Burama shekete nanando pragadia sonde babataya. Aye, I'm forever loved. I'm forever justified. I'm forever resting in Christ. I'm forever forgiven. Ima no mo sika banda babate. Alande ashakamos. Alani asute te 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 kabana mande sida paya. I'm already loved. I'm already forgiven. I am not begging to get forgiveness. I have forgiveness already. Iba nonde skiba nayas. Abombe la sende de papaya. The love of God is real. His forgiveness does not repent. Ikamo sayamane. Redemption cannot be taken away. Ora mama mana mashate. His gifts are irrevocable. His gifts are irrevocable. I am forever loved. I am forever justified. Ikamo bosida paya. us to think that we have to beg God to forgive us. Religious make us think that we have to beg God to erase the causes in our family. What was not even causes in the first place? Religion told us we have to fast for 30 days. To see God, we have to fast and pray. Whereas God has come already. Ooh. God has come already. Religion has wounded our country. Religion has dealt with us so badly. But he has come already. He has made himself available already. We are not struggling to please him. We are not struggling to catch him. He's not doing ice and water with us. He's not doing hide and seek. He's not doing police and thief. He's not hiding from us. He's already. The Bible says that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. He's not masked. He's not hiding himself. He has appeared already. He has appeared already. Jesus' sacrifice is a public property. It's for every nation. 
He has appeared already. His grace is a public asset. It's for everybody. Whether believers or unbelievers. It's for everybody. The grace is for all. The grace is for all. The grace is for all. Shame unto religion. Shame unto religion. Shame unto religion. The grace is for all. The Bible says, For by Moses came law and grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Scripture says we are no longer under the law. We are under grace. We are under grace. We are not struggling to please God. We are not struggling to make it. Heavenly race. No, it's a trash. I'm in heaven already. I have eternal life already. Inside me, I have God in his fullness. I have eternal life already in me. I now know the bad thing that religion has done. It has eroded our mental capacity to be fruitful. The same mental space that we need to use in our career and be fruitful. That's the same mental space we are using to pursue a God that is already here. We are seeking a God that has already found us. Hallelujah. We are seeking a God who has found us by grace. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Can we briefly have our seat? Woe to religion. Shame unto religion. <sighs> what is this rest we are talking about? The rest we are talking about is not just an intellectual agreement. It's not just that, okay, I heard. It's not about that. The rest we are talking about is peace with God. God is not mad at you. Is mad about you. God is not angry at you. He's not holding a cane behind him. And if you do anything wrong, he, he just give you one. He's not hiding a robber behind him. He's open. His arms are open wide. He loves you radically. Yeah. You, we have peace with God. Yeah. You see, when I came into that doctrine of grace that I am for, forever loved. I don't need to go to mountain again. Any retreat I want to do, I can do it in an hotel. That alone changed my outlook. So I was not to punish myself to catch God. No, retreat is good, but should I go that far? Like when God is in me already. Hallelujah. Amen. So rest means peace with God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. I want us to do a little scripture before I leave this place. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Are we blessed? Praise God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. The Bible says that, media. Romans 5 1. Okay. If you have it, let me read it from here, from my um, NIV. Romans 5 1. Therefore, since being justified by faith, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. Where do we stand? Where do we stand? And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Secondly, rest means freedom from bondage. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Jesus was saying that come unto me all ye that were laden and are heavy 
uh, all, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So Jesus was extending rest to people. He, may, he, he said, um, come ye unto me, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Rest means freedom from bondage. Hallelujah. Freedom from bondage. We are not in bondage. We are not under the law. We are under grace. Hallelujah. Rest means freedom of worship according to the gospel. Some people cannot worship until they get to church. But that's not worship. We are forever in worship. There is nothing like mood of worship. That's an insult from religion. I'm always in the mood of worship. Hallelujah. The Bible called us as the temple of God. So worship never stops. Hallelujah. We forever meditate on God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. For some people, they must wear a particular clothes before they worship. They must wear, I won't call the color. They must wear the particular clothes before they worship. But, but that's not it. Hallelujah. Worship is never stopping. Anywhere you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have freedom of worship. We have freedom of worship. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.16, please let's project it. Hebrews 4.16, TPT. We read only TPT. Hebrews 4.16. I have a few confessions that we'll make this morning before I leave. It's just like five of them. And we trust God to help us. Hebrews 4.16, the Bible says, So now we draw near freely and boldly to where grace is enthroned, to receive God's mercy, to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. Can we do message version? Message. Message, please. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy. Accept the help. Accept the help. I need to do something to get your help. Forget about what you need to do. Accept it. So it means the help is made available already. And this is why we say that the, prob the problem of believer is not power. The problem of, of believer is awareness problem. You are not aware that everything you need has been provided already. So your position is acceptance position. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the God we have. Hallelujah. And finally, rest means to be grounded in God's love. Ephesians 3.17. You see, I always say that therapists, they are actually selling God's principle. I, I love therapy. And I'm not trying to say, I hope we get my point. The thing is that if you study your Bible accurately, some of the principles they are communicating to help people's mindset and wellness, emotional wellness, by the time you know that you are radically loved, that nobody is judging you, confidence will come. You won't think of what people are thinking about you. You forget about that. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm serious. When I came into the message of grace, I became extra bold. Even things that I will not naturally do, I mean, outside in my career, I was doing them. Because I know that if the God of all the world is not judging me, what is your own opinion? So, there is this undisturbed love and calmness that is in you. The Bible says, perfect love cast out fear. You are not afraid because you know that you are always safe in his hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, rest means being grounded in God's love. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.17. Oh, thank you so much, Lydia. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. The life of a man is large. We have the career aspect. We have the emotional aspect. We have the relationship aspect. We have the Let's keep going. F finance. How come I now remember that one as the fourth? And it's very important. <laughs> we, we have the finance aspect. We have the networking aspect. We have, and it goes on like that. But the Bible says that the love of God is the very source and the root of your life. Hallelujah. 
there is a way that the love of God can be evident in your career. It can be evident in your business. It can be evident in the way you relate with your customers. It can be evident in the way you relate with your colleagues. It can be evident in the way you relate with your boss. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want us to say with me, the finished works of Christ has perfected my healing. It has perfected my deliverance. It has perfected my prosperity. It has perfected my victory. It has perfected my joy, my peace, my rest, and everything I need in life. Can we be on our feet? Where will I be without your love? Sorry, I changed your key. That's where I found myself. <laughs> I feel the warmth of your arms around me. Please help me cross worship. Help my infirmity. <laughs> Look, Look what, what you've, you've done already. I want that to be going on the background Look as we make this confession. Look what you've done already. So cross, cross worship should just continue singing the song while the rest of us take this confession. Oh, what would I do? I have been freed from the burden of guilt. I have been freed from trauma. I have been freed from diseases and sicknesses. I am resting in God's love. I am resting in the finished works of Christ. I am resting in God's radical acceptance. I am resting in God's eternal love. I am resting in God's eternal justification. Look what you've done already. Yeah. Amen. By God's grace, we are blessed in the house today to have one of the very beautiful friends of Cross Point Church. Can we make welcome Minister Nyon Adejo? To heal.